Well, Congresswoman, you're here to support India. Tell me why. You know, I think India Walton, not only is she such a remarkable example of the kind of leadership that we need in this here, here in the city of Buffalo, in the state of New York, but I also think that she's really representative of a positive shift towards working, poli working people's politics here in the United States. To have a mayoral candidate that is supported with small dollar donations that uh, can show that it is possible to be and win the Democratic nomination um, solely accountable to the voters and people that she represents, I think it's remarkable and it's really important to support candidates like her across the country. Yeah. So you're here today to help India win on November 2nd. Mm -hmm. How can you and other progressives in Congress across New York State help, assuming she wins, help her to govern? and help her to navigate this landscape you've just described, this sort of tension between mm -hmm. moderates and progressives and, and, and conservatives. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think a, a great example of, of how we do that, uh, really we can point to earlier this year with the progressive push in the American Rescue Plan to ensure that we have outsized state and local funding in federal programs because we know that a lot of policymakers on the federal level, they don't know Buffalo the way that that India Walton knows Buffalo. They don't know federal officials don't have the 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 level of detail and understanding and block by, by block knowledge of what needs investment and what can be changed and, and pushed forward. And so the way the, the way that we reconciled the fact that the federal government does have the resources to enact this change is to make sure that we have down ballot elected officials um, in executive positions, mayoral seats, gubernatorial seats, etc., that really are accountable to everyday people. And and you know we as federal officials and as a movement can be able to garner the resources that they need with the trust that they will execute in the full faith of their constituencies. India, let me turn the same question to you. What do you need from your allies in Albany and in D.C. in terms of brain power, money, things like that? What? Yeah, um, I think you named the things, <laughs> Jeff. Um, brain power, yes. Money, yes. We are building a world that for many years and for many of us we didn't think was possible and in order for us to prove that progressive policies can work and can work to the benefit of working people we all have to work together at all levels of government and I'm excited at the prospect of being in an executive position that is really going to carry out on a municipal level a lot of the progressive policies that we see coming out of Washington and out of Albany. Mm -hmm. And if there's one note that I can add on that as well is that this isn't just about how, fe how federal officials can help lead change on, local, on the local level, but how very often some of the most transformative federal policies that we've had have been inspired by courageous, grassroots, local leadership that has acted almost like laboratories um, for innovative policy that is then proven to work at scale on a city scale or state scale that then gets adopted on the federal level. And I think a perfect, exam a perfect example of that is the, is the moment that we're at in Washington right now of introducing universal pre-K. And the only reason, I would say, well, I would say the major reason why we are able to really be at the precipice of providing guaranteed universal uh, pre-K in this country is because of the progressive movement in New York City that showed that it was possible despite at the time an enormous amount of resistance saying that it was not a, a logistically possible thing to do. Mm -hmm. Are there other, other sort of specific programs like that that you can either you could imagine Buffalo being a laboratory for? I can. Um, community Land Trust is one and the other is a universal basic minimum income. Um, I have for a long time followed Michael Tubbs um, and the Mayor's Ford Guaranteed Income and pilots are happening all over the country and um, in cities and I hope that we can add Buffalo to that list. Hmm. Congresswoman, you mentioned at the start 
how this race kind of resonates with this broader struggle between conservatives and progressives, both within the Democratic Party and without it. Um, how do you, how do you advise, you've had some experience with this, how do you advise India to navigate governing in a situation like that? It, in an executive capacity as opposed to a legislative one. Well, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of India because she is seeking out an executive position. And this is something that is always kind of seen as, a, as, a, um, as two parallel tracks in governance. There are executive positions, mayoral positions, gubernatorial positions, where leadership ultimately comes to a head and, um, and the relationship between executives uh, local executives and their local legislatures, I think has a lot less red tape than we have in the federal government. And so, um, so I think that she's actually much more capable in delivering very immediate change um, than, than uh, even on the federal level, where we often have to struggle for decades in order to achieve things like increased minimum wage, uh, guaranteed health care, and more. You, uh, you stood behind India early, back in the spring. Um, there's been, a, until very recently, a great deal of silence from mm -hmm. other elected Democrats in the state. Uh, but this week, Chuck Schumer mm -hmm. uh, followed, your, followed you, and now tonight, Christian Gillibrand. Um, how, those are two moderate Democrats, quite moderate. Um, how, and you're quite progressive, how do you both land on the same candidate? Well, you know, I think it is an incredibly important value in the Democratic Party that we have our out and outs during a primary, but ultimately when a candidate wins the Democratic nomination, whether it's for mayor or whether it's for the presidency, the understanding is that all of us as Democrats will come together to rally behind who is that, to rally behind our party's nominee. It is an extremely, I would say, foundational precedent for our party because without it, it risks our, the party's national prospects, not only on, on a local level, but really for the entire country. And so we can have major disagreements, part primaries, you know, this country just lived through a presidential election last year, and we know how contentious primary elections can be. Did I endorse Joe Biden as for president last year? No, but once he won the nomination, we understand that we come together to support our party's nominee. And I would say that violating that precedent is, is not only it is, it is, it's not only, uh, I would say, let me say I'll, I'll start again. Violating that precedent um, is dangerous. It's dangerous for our party because just as the moderate wing of the party asked the progressive wing of the party and said it's, it is so critically important that the progressive wing of the party support the moderate because the moderate won the presidential election, the moderate wing of the party has to demonstrate that it is willing and does do the same thing when a progressive candidate also wins a nomination. Because if we don't do that in both ways, then we truly risk a, 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 a fracturing that is unhealthy ultimately, not just for the party, but, but unhealthy for cities, states, and, and entire countries, our entire country, that would suffer from the lack of, from that discord. One last question. Sorry. Can I just do one more? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. So thank sorry you all about very that. Much. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you, Jay.